There's got to be a morning after. Oh, if we could just get through the rain. Listen, y'all. Woo! Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. Y'all, I just thought I'd share this with you. I don't know if you've seen this article, but um, 239 experts with one big claim, the coronavirus is airborne, okay? And this was, uh, this article came out of the New York Times, the coronavirus is finding new victims worldwide in bars and restaurants, offices, markets, and casinos, giving rise to frightening clusters of infection that increasingly confirm what many scientists have been saying for months, that the virus lingers in the indoors air, affecting those nearby. If airborne transmission is a significant factor in the pandemic, especially in crowded spaces with poor ventilation, the consequences for containment will be significant. Masks may be needed indoors, even in socially distant settings. Health care workers may need N95 masks to filter out even the smallest respiratory droplets as they care for coronavirus patients. Ventilation systems in schools, nursing homes, residences, and businesses may need to minimize recirculating air and add powerful new filters. Ultraviolet lights may be needed to kill viral particles floating in tiny droplets inside wherever you are. The World Health Organization has long held that the coronavirus is spread primarily by large respiratory droplets that once expelled by infected people through coughs and sneezes, fall quickly to the floor. But in an open letter to the WHO, 239 scientists in 32 countries have outlined the evidence showing that smaller particles can infect people and are calling for the agency to revise its recommendations. The researchers plan to publish their letter in a scientific journal next week. Okay? Now, y'all hear that? So these uh, 239 scientists are disagreeing with the WHO, World Health Organization, that is. Even in its latest update on a coronavirus released on June 29th, the World Health Organization said airborne transmission of the virus is possible only after medical procedures that produce, that produce aerosols or droplets smaller than um, five microns. Um, a micron is equal to one millionth of a meter. Proper ventilation and N95 masks are of concern only in those circumstances, according to the WHO. Instead, its infection control guidance before and during this pandemic has heavily promoted the importance of hand washing as a primary prevention strategy, even though there is limited evidence for transmission of the virus from surfaces. Mm. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention now says surfaces are likely to play only a minor role. Oh. Dr. Bendata Alan Grazi, the WHO's Technical lead on infection control said the evidence of the virus spreading by air is unconvincing. Because you know it can't be, they can't be wrong, right? Especially in the last couple months, we have been stating several times that we consider airborne transmission as possible, but certainly not supported by solid or even clear evidence, she said. There is strong debate on this. Now, but interviews with 20 scientists, including a dozen of WHO consultants and several members of the committee that crafted the guidance and internal emails paint a picture of an organization that, despite its good intention, is out of step with science. 
whether carried aloft by a large droplets that zoom through the air after a sneeze or by smaller exhaled droplets that may glide the length of a room, these experts said that the coronavirus is airborne enough through the air and can affect people when it's inhaled. Now, most of these experts sympathize with the Who's growing portfolio and shrinking budget and noted the tricky political relationships it has to manage, especially with the United States and China. They praise the WHO staff for holding daily briefings and tirelessly answering questions about the pandemic. But the Infection Prevention and Control Committee in particular, experts said, is bound by the rigid and overly medicalized view of science ev scientific evidence is slow and risk adverse in updating its guidance and allows few conservative voices to shout down dissent. They'll die defending their views, said one long uh, standing who consulted who did not wish to be identified because of her continuing work for the organization. Even its staunchest supporters said the committee should diversify its expense and relax its criteria for proof, especially in the fast moving outbreaks such as coronavirus. I do get frustrated about the issues of airflow and sizes of particle. Absolutely, said Mary Louise McLaws, a committee member and epidemiologist at the University of New South Wales in Sydney. If we started revisiting airflow, we would have to be prepared to change a lot of what we do, she said. I think it's a good idea, a very good idea, but it will cause an enormous shudder through the Infection Control Society. In April, a group of 36 experts on air quality and aerosols urged the World Health Organization to consider the growing evidence on airborne transmission of the coronavirus. The agency responded promptly, calling Lydia Morasti, the group's leader and long-time WHO consultant, to arrange a meeting. But the discussion was dominated by a few experts who are staunch supporters of hand washing and felt that it must be emphasized over aerosols, according to some participants and the committee's advice, it remained unchanged. Hmm. And that's something. Dr. Morawski and others pointed to several incidents that indicate airborne transmission of the virus, particularly in poorly ventilated uh, and crowded indoor spaces, is the problem. They said that the WHO was making an artificial distinction between tiny aerosols and larger droplets, even though infected people produce both. We've known since 1946 that coffee and talking generate aerosols, said Lindsay Marr. Scientists have not been able to grow the coronavirus from aerosols in the lab, but that, that doesn't mean that the aerosols are not infective, Dr. Marr said. Most of those samples in the experiments come from hospital rooms with good airflow that would dilute those levels. Anyway, mm. 